Hey guys, Al Fam here with TVRG Homes. Today I have with me uh, Billy Saylor from Fairway Mortgage and Ian Shores from Bull Run Financial. So hey, say hi you guys. How you doing? How we doing? Great. So uh, obviously um, in the industry that I'm in, people always ask about buying a home. Um, what they also should be asking is questions to Billy about the financial side of things. You know, I do the fun stuff. Billy does all the heavy lifting and the crunching of the numbers. Um, so we want to just come uh, bring this video to, to you guys today about like some commonly, uh, some common questions about mortgages that um, would probably make things a lot easier for all you guys and clear the air a little bit and clear some of the confusion out. So the first question that I hear a lot is, um, how does my credit score impact my uh, purchasing power? Okay. Cool, All right, well, very good question, Al. And uh, credit score is definitely one of the three most important pieces of, of a person's uh, eligibility when it comes to determining uh, programs that would best suit them and just their overall eligibility, you know, credit score, income, and assets, right? So credit score is going to not only let us know what programs they're eligible for, uh, but it's also going to give us an idea of, of pricing and ultimately what rate the individual qualifies for. I mean, when a underwriter, when a lender looks at, at a borrower and looks at their credit score, their, their credit score and their credit history gives an indication of how likely they are to continue to repay. It's, it's, it's part of their ability to repay. And, you know, we can look at someone's history as a predictor of their payment history in the future, where they would be a you know, a, a good borrower, someone who's going to pay on time, and, and ultimately, um, those going to play when we're looking at uh, conventional requirements, uh, FHA requirements. You know, different programs have different school requirements. For someone who may be in the mid sixes, you know, and, and higher, they be eligible for certain programs. Whereas if they're a little lower, maybe we're going to look at FHA or USDA, which have more flexibility in those credit score requirements. Someone who is um, below say 700, I might lean more towards FHA because the um, pricing adjustments that come into play are a lot, um, they're, they're unfortunately they're less costly with FHA. With conventional, uh, they, they would be. So those are definitely, uh, credit score is definitely an, an important, important piece when it comes to determining what a buyer is going to be eligible for and what programs we're going to be placed in them. Billy, we appreciate you being here. Uh, you know, I know there's a lot of questions we could throw at you. There's a couple uh, uh, that I had on my mind and then one in particular that a lot of people have uh, brought up in conversations uh, just in general. Uh, and that one is pre-approved and pre-qualified. Uh, now I'm assuming they're two separate things uh, and they're, they're determining factors between the both. And if you could uh, kind of clarify that for me, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, definitely. This is, uh, I mean, this is probably one of the more frustrating things that that we have to deal with, and I'm sure with, with Al as well, is when you get those offers come over and you have a pre-qualification versus pre-approval. And essentially what a pre-qualification is, is someone goes online or they talk to a loan officer or a lender, they fill out an application, and the loan officer therefore drafts a letter or determines their eligibility based on what a borrower or what they take off an application. That is essentially your pre-qualification. Uh, it's a great gauge. Um, if, if I were an agent, if I were a seller, I wouldn't really want to, um, I wouldn't want to approve someone or, or you know, someone offer based on a pre-qualification. A, a pre-approval is going to be a lender collects their documentation, their tax returns, their income, verifies income, verifies assets. It's a much it's a much deeper dive into a person's qualification to truly verify that the income is correct. The reserves assets are correct. The person qualifies for what it is that you're listing on a piece of paper they qualify for. Uh, so definitely a pre-approval is a much deeper dive. And when it comes to the competitive market we have right now, you're gonna to wanna to pre-approve every time over pre-qualification, just simply based on minimizing risk of that information not being correct in application. Because I'm sure uh, you can imagine, we all the time get people you know, who state, hey, I make X amount of money on their application. Then when you look at their returns and look at their income, you say, wait a minute, uh, unfortunately, you're not counting this or you're not counting that. 
And so the income becomes back far different than what they might have listed on the application. So a pre-approval definitely helps us protect against those kinds of hurdles that, you know, that, that might come up. So a uh, question I always hear a lot, Billy, I'm sure you get this one a lot too, uh, concerns down payment. Uh, how much should a person be putting down uh, on their house? Yeah, that's, that's another great one. I mean, it's, it is surprising um, to that people still have this perception that I've got to have 20% to put down on a purchase. You know, I need to have 20%. And look, 20% is a great gauge because that's kind of the, of the defining line between do I need mortgage insurance or do I not need mortgage insurance? And mortgage insurance can be very costly, uh, kind of depending on the program. So, but if we're just talking about how much down payment is actually required on a transaction, depending if you're a veteran, you, know, you get a VA loan with 100% financing, which is no down payment. There are certainly conventional options which have down payment as little as 3% for first time home buyers. Uh, there are options uh, like VHDA, uh, which ultimately you can get 100% financing or you can get 99% uh, financing. I mean, there are definitely options that will allow you to still be able to enjoy home ownership without having to worry about this humongous down payment requirement. Um, different down payments, you know, whether it be three, five, 10, yeah, you, 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 you look at those and, and determine how much mortgage insurance will ultimately be, be required. Uh, but for those, you know, for those home buyers, which, which might be strapped for cash, there are definitely options to help minimize those down payment requirements uh, to kind of suit their needs and, and ultimately suit uh, their long-term strategy. Uh, because someone, uh, it might be more beneficial for them to put down less money and hold on to that cash uh, than it would be to put down a large down payment, just kind of based on what their, their, their long-term plan is for that property. So Billy, yeah, thanks for all your uh, your insight and knowledge today. Uh, I know that definitely cleared uh, some confusion for a lot of people. Uh, if you have any other questions that, that you, uh, you know you want to ask, uh, I'll leave Billy's contact information below. Of course, if you have any questions for myself or Ian, our contact information will be uh, down in the description as well. Uh, so yeah, like until next time, uh, thank you guys for your time. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, Ian. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. So take care. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Have a great one, all right? Thank you.